Hello again, everyone. So, it's been brought to my attention that uh, maybe this Timothy and Pierre Porsche Singer is out of scale or a little bit small. Uh, a commenter, Quentin Chu, brought this up. So, very good eye. More, better eye than me, for sure. So, these are supposed to be redos of Porsche 964s. And so, a 964 is a wheelbase of 2270 millimeters. So, let me just zero out my calipers. You know, let's take a look here. Try to get this in the center. All right. So sorry it's taking so long. I want to, these are so expensive. I want to know. Thirty-three point seven five somewhere in that ballpark. So look at this. This thing is like 167 scale. This uh, Timothy and Pierre. So let me punch in 2270 again in my calculator. And now let's go to this uh, Titan 64. Zero. So this is more like 35. So bye bye. 35.07. 164-ish. Well, 165. Bearing in mind, you know, my measurements might be a tiny bit off, but suffice to say, the Titan 64 is more more than 164 than this uh, Timothy and Pierre. So. Well, that's a real shame, Timothy and Pierre. That's another strike against you. The first major strike I have against you guys is the fact that you just have painted on lights here, which you would find on a, a green light. But for the cost of your models, I mean, you guys got a... Well, I mean, it's not even a scale model. Well, to normal people, I don't think. This is like a random Hot Wheels size now. So I guess this is now the greatest Hot Wheels I've ever seen. And before it was like a mini GT, and before that, or after that, it was the Model Collect. But now this is the the best three inch Hot Wheels scale 911 that you can buy. But it's a bit a bit of a letdown. All right. Okay, so I reviewed this a, a little while back. There was a little bit of a glitch in YouTube. A lot of you guys may have missed it, but uh, you might want to search my uh, channel. It's a couple weeks ago. This is a fantastic model. This is the nicest classic 911 you can buy in 164 scale as we now have confirmed. But this is the Targa version with this uh, you know, metal roll hoop, I guess it would be called. And I wanted to try a different body style. And so what we're looking at here is a supposed to be this car. Well, let's find out. Let's make sure I actually got what I ordered. So this is brand new. This is how it came out of the packaging, my mail. And I have not opened it, obviously. The last one I bought at the shop, so it was already opened in a display cabinet. So I'm curious how this thing is actually packaged. So this is a really heavy duty cardboard sleeve cover here. I, I, have to assume the makeup here is the parent brand, but for some reason the thing is called a Titan 64, so it's kind of confusing. I guess the line, the product line, is called Titan 64. They, yeah, I think maybe this brand does bigger scales, so I guess that's it. Alright, so that goes. Then we have a thank you card about spending your money on this model. Some Japanese couple other models here. Now this one doesn't say when it was made. The last card I had actually said like November 2020. So no copyright or we really don't know how old this model is in the future. Okay so now we got this uh, suede fake thing with the embossed uh, or debossed uh, makeup stuff here. So if you get fingerprints all over your plastic case you can wipe them down. Pretty tight fit. Nothing down there. And then more plastic. Which 
which I would normally complain about being wasteful, but I guess now, you know, it's a double layer knowing that you got a, a, a new model. And so I have to believe this is a brand new model, the way it left the makeup factory, wherever that might be. Alright, so, this is very loose. So, oh, don't, don't lift it up by the cover. Same uh, type of uh, badge here. Well, no, it's different. I guess, you know what, we'll compare at the end. Never mind, we'll compare it to the other makeup at the end. Well, look at this. This is not the model I uh, thought I ordered. So, that's... Uh, <laughs> I guess I'll continue the review. I might have to actually talk to the seller about this. I'm pretty sure on the photos uh, the thing had blue stripes, uh, the eBay listing that, I, listing that I got this from. But, well, let's see. Let's see what happens. Let's take a look first at this. You know what? I'm going to have to reset. This just isn't right, right? I'm going to try to find images of this car. So I reset the uh, photos here, and it does look like they mimic this car that we're looking at here in the back. Uh, there we go. Yeah, it looks pretty good to me. I also saw other cars where they had orange wheels, but this one actually has silver wheels, so let's try to focus in between the two. And then I want you to notice there's many interiors by this singer. I mean, these are half a million dollar and up cars, so you can get anything you want. But I believe this image is really close to the interior of this model. So let's get into the looking at this model in closer detail now. It's a sky blue. It's not metallic. It's pretty much like the golf colors, or what I envision the golf colors are. Golf oil, that is. Uh, the door handle is a separate chrome piece, it's sticking out, and there's air behind it so you can actually grab it. I think this is an oil filler cap. The wheels look nice, they're black and silver, and they have this, uh, I think they're Forgiato wheels? Uh, someone left a comment in one of my videos, I, yeah, I believe that's a Forgiato logo. There is, a uh, you know, air passing between those holes there, and lug nut hole details. We're gonna need the flashlight on this one. Yeah, there's a brake back there and it has cross drill, a cross drill pattern. And I think in the one o'clock position, there's a red brake caliper. On the front, same thing, same position. Okay, so very nice, very nice indeed. You have the windows here. They have silver paint on the back side, I think. Yeah, that's perfectly smooth. That's one piece of plastic, but the graphic is on the back side. It works. Uh, then you have the little separate stubby mirror here. It's okay. It's all chromed plastic. The front end, yeah, what I like are these uh, lights. And I had no clue how these were made on my first review. And truthfully, I don't know the answer today, but I'm going to guess a little differently. I feel like this is a chromed piece of plastic, and then they put colored resin into that these openings. So then once the resin hardens, then they polish the entire thing. <clears throat> so that's what gives it a completely smooth singular surface. That's what I suspect. Before I thought they put in pieces of plastic and then clear coated it. But you would probably see little air gaps between the orange and the chrome. But I don't see any gaps, so I almost feel this might be orange resin poured into it and then it hardens. But again, that's just speculation. I don't work for this model company or the factory. There is a, I believe, a photo etched metal piece down here. I could be wrong again, though. It's in shadow. See the texture? But yeah, I think it's like the other one. Yeah. So that's a photo etched piece of painted metal. And then this Porsche crest here is underneath the clear coat. So that can never chip off or anything like that. Because it's under the clear coat. You notice this clear coat has almost no orange peel? It has no orange peel. Look at the reflection of the pick and the edge of it. How, how relatively, well, maybe it's a little orange peel. 
But anyways, I, I also suspect these models are hand polished after they're clear coated to knock down that peeliness. There's a little bit of peeliness, orange peel. So yeah, this is wet sanded afterwards, which would explain why this model costs a lot of money. The headlights are chromed pieces, and then, you know, again, I, I wouldn't doubt that this is clear resin poured into it versus a separate piece of plastic where you would see little air pockets or a gap. I just don't see a gap between the clear and the chrome. Leave a comment if you think, uh, you know, how they made this this model. I find it interesting how to make models because, you know, it's very time consuming. Alright, uh, yeah, panel gaps are okay. No complaints there. The tires, you know, they have good curvature to the sidewalls. They look pretty good. They're not slab sided. Then the tail end here, I do feel that these exhaust tips are metal pieces because they're so so perfectly round and yet so thin. You can't mold plastic that perfect and that small, you know, because the the heat, it would warp when it's cooling off. So, I'm pretty sure that's actually polished metal tubes. So that's another great thing. This license plate is a separate piece. Uh, yeah, again, the, the tail lights here, I think, are made in that same fashion where the resin thing. Uh, these reflectors are separate pieces, and I think they might possibly have red on them. Yeah, they're, they're showing red. Now, is that red painted on? I don't know. I mean, I don't see any thickness of it other than the metal, so... I'm, I'm gonna guess this is red, clear red paint on a shiny piece of metal. Alright, uh, the Singer badge here. Mm, boy, man, this... Okay, that's a really small badge, but it's under the clear coat again. Yeah, very nice. And then we have this little ducktail, and then this is a separate piece. I don't know if it's plastic or metal, but there's an air cavity below it. You can see the, the edge there. So over here is dark, over there is a little blue. So there's literally a hollow opening there, so that's really nice. The, the rear window, again, is perfectly smooth, so there's paint on the back side. Now we start looking into the interior. Look at this. Two different browns. It looks like a Louis Vuitton uh, pattern, right? Am I right? Okay. Let's see. I'm going to try to hold this steady. I'm going to try to f focus on and then try to zoom in. Alright, look at that tiny shift knob. It's got the boot. The steering wheel is actually just plain black, which is a little odd. You would think there'd be something in the middle of it, but I don't see it. The gauges are fantastic, you know, all the little markers and stuff. And then the dashboard has a, you know, it's black, but it has that Louis Vuitton stripe on the bottom. I'm pretty sure on the far end there might be a Singer logo there. We might, we'll have to turn it around to the other side, but... Uh, the door here... Oh boy, hold on. Can't get a good light angle in there. But there's an armrest, and it looks like it's a black tweeter or something, a speaker. The roll bar in the back is color matched brown. And then the emergency brake is black and chrome. And there's tiny little photo edge pieces that look like seatbelt buckles with red paint on them. The gas pedal has a texture, the brake pedal as well, and then the clutch. Yeah, so. so Another rear, you know, this brand actually has those controls, which is pretty crazy. Alright, let's try here. You know, I don't see a Singer badge there like on my other model on the dashboard. Nor do I see the lower vents like that other model. So this interior, I think, is a different molding. Or, well, definitely a different graphic than the other one. Now the front seats, oddly, don't have a Louis Vuitton pattern in the middle. They just have the dot, the dimples, but I don't see a separate, separate thing, right? They're just plain brown. So now I'm seeing, you know, this metal um, rearview mirror, 
And then we have the wiper blades, which are actually three-dimensional with a stock, an arm, and then perpendicular wiper blades touching the windscreen. So those are probably the best in 164. Two little metal pieces for the uh, fluid ejectors. Yeah, that's weird though. See how the rear seats have that pattern, but not the front? So is that just an oversight from the factory? Or was this car specifically designed that way? I don't know. It seems odd that they wouldn't match the seats. Alright, well, okay, let me back out again. Now let's uh, compare a little bit here. Well, let me get the spinning thing. Singer Porsche meat, I believe in Monterey. So they both have the same base, you know, this leather covered base, although I'm not sure if it's real leather or not. But you'll see the the nameplate is different, you know, the shape is different, and then this other one has uh, actual stamping about what number it is. Whereas the orange one does not tell you any sort of limited edition, but this one actually has a number on it. So I don't know which model is more recent. I, I don't know. Okay. So let's just bring out the uh, this thing again, or compare the two. This is hard to do since they're on bases. I'm going to try to line up the back of these truck cars and so you'll see the scale difference. Or actually their exhaust tips. I'm going to line up the front ends of the car. Ah oh boy, sorry. Um, flexible ruler is not going to get the job done, but a metal ruler will. There we go. So those front ends are pretty much lined up. Now you can see the difference in scale. It's quite obvious, I think, you know, the, how much smaller that Timothy and Pierre is. Hmm. I would have never guessed that Timothy and Pierre would be so out of scale just based off its price, but now I guess we know that price has no effect on actual scale accuracy. It's just weird to me that someone would go through that much trouble making a model and then not even make it to a, a standardized scale. <clears throat> Alright. So let's let these two spin. Now you notice on the Targa, you know, all four seats have the same graphic on them. So I really feel, I'm going to have to check back on the photographs of this blue car. This is definitely, this is not the car I ordered off eBay. I specifically ordered the original pictures, a silver car with blue stripes, because I wanted a metallic finish. I already have a flat color, you know, this orange one, so I wanted to have a metal color. So I'm going to have to contact that eBay seller and get some money back or a refund or something, because this simply isn't what I wanted. So, alright, so another reason why I open things here on my videos, because it's documenting the fact that uh, I'm not getting what I ordered. So, all right, well, nevertheless, if you like classic Porsches, this is the brand to look into, uh, Titan 64, or maybe that's the, the product line, Titan 64 Makeup, I think is the brand. These are simply the best. Now we know the scale's right, and then it has all the details that most other brands don't do. Most other brands don't clear coat their uh, badges. It's very rare. All right, I don't know if I'm gonna ever buy another model from this brand because now I have both body styles. And so, well, sorry, might be the end of this chapter unless they create some new castings. They do have another casting with some sort of Asian car, but for some reason it doesn't appeal to me. I think the GR Supra, but I'm pretty happy with my uh, Hobby Japan one. So, all right, well, thanks for tuning in, and I'll see you around. Thank you.